Today in our 2015 Subaru Outback Wagon, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Kurt Custom Fit Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver. This offers a 2 inch by 2 inch opening. Its part number is C13206. Alright guys, this is what our hitch is going to look like installed in the vehicle. It's going to give us a nice clean look. We've got the rounded bar. We'll see from side plate to side plate. This tucks in pretty nice so it's not as wide as the entire vehicle there. We've got our 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. The reinforcement collar's got a nice flush appearance to it. I really like the way the hitch looks. It's going to be about even, maybe just a little bit out past our bumper here. I don't think you're going to have any issues with bumping your leg on it or anything like that. If you do, you're probably trying. You see our safety chain connection points here, nice and open. Should have no issues getting our safety chains connected. Kind of has that plate down on that bottom that's going to give us some really good tongue weight capacity there. And you can see our 5 8 diameter hole. That's going to work out great with most of the Class 3 accessories. Looks like we've got enough room there. It's going to be what we'll secure all of our items with. As far as tow ratings are concerned with the hitch, we're going to have a 600 pound maximum tongue weight rating. That's going to be the maximum weight we can put down here on the opening of our receiver tube. And then we're going to have a 4,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. This would be the total of our trailer and then everything that we've got loaded up on it. Of course, we do want to look into the owner's manual of the Subaru, figure out what its tow rating is, and we'll use whichever of those numbers are the lowest. Now, a few measurements that are going to be helpful in selecting your ball mount, bike rack, or hitch cargo carrier will be from the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening. We've got about 15 and a half inches. Then from the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of our bumper, it's about two and a half. To begin our installation, we need to lower down the exhaust here. There's going to be three hangers. On the inside here at the rear, we've got one. Be right here. If we go directly across, kind of caddy corner, there's another one hidden right up there in the wheel well, or just behind the wheel well. And then just on the driver's side front of this rear differential, we're gonna have one more right there. Before we start taking anything down, we're just gonna use a cam buckle strap here as a safety strap. Pull it up there nice and tight now. Then after we remove those hangers, we'll be able to lower it and kind of control. That's going to offer some support so we don't do any damage. We'll use a little bit of spray lubricant on each of those rubber isolators to kind of help them slide off a little bit easier. And then it's a matter of just sliding them off. Sometimes they're fairly easy. Sometimes they're a little more difficult. If they're going to be a little more difficult, you can use a pry bar. And you just want to pry directly toward on the back side of that isolator. Right. With the three of those separated, pull a little slack in our cable there. It'll allow us to get to the heat shield right there that we need to remove. And to remove that, we'll need a 10 millimeter socket. We're just gonna take out the four bolts that hold it in place. And we'll pull down on the rear, and we can slide that right out. Now we do need to clear off just a little bit of room here on the heat shield or trim it off to allow for the side plates of our hitch to go into place. We're looking at the bottom side or the contoured side. Here's the E and the L with the arrow facing that way. So if we come toward the front of the car from that and over, we'll see our two mounting holes here. We're gonna get just inside of this mounting location just like that. Then we're essentially just going to follow that bend right on down. We're going to eliminate this connection point. Fairly flexible material, so tin snips will do a fine job, or aviation shears, whatever you've got. Once that's trimmed out, We'll continue on to set this aside for reinstallation later. Now in each frame rail here, we're going to have two rubber plugs, one closer to the rear. I'll pull that out. This is going to act as our rear attachment point. And if we come forward from there, there's going to be one in the front. This is going to act as our access hole. So we'll need to enlarge this hole on each side so our spacer block and bolt will go up in. Our other attachment point will be somewhere here in the middle we're going to drill that out once our hitch is in place. So we'll pull the rubber plugs out on each side. 
Now at this point you can use a jigsaw designed for metal, you can use a file, whatever you need to just to enlarge the hole. We want to widen this to about an inch and an eighth, an inch and a half wide, and then also deep enough for that bolt to pass through. I'm going to use a, just kind of like a rotary cutoff wheel. Now that we've got our access holes cut out, we're going to take our fish wire, we're going to go into our rear mounting location, and then up towards our hole. And we'll place on our spacer block, and we also want to thread on one of our half inch carriage bolts. Now we'll feed them in separately. and then pull them back to create our attachment point. Do the same thing on the other side as well. Now as we raise our hitch into position, we want to make sure that our carriage bolts are going to come down and through our bracket. And we're going to take one of our half inch flange nuts and thread that right onto our carriage bolt. Let's get one started on each side. And we'll bring them both up finger tight. Now we're ready to use our hitch as a template in a 17 30 second bit and drill our forward mounting location. Now we'll go over to the driver's side and we'll do the same thing for there. Now we're ready to repeat the same process that we did earlier with our fish wire and spacer block, this time for our forward mounting location. Now let's snug down our bolts and then we can torque them to the proper specification which we'll find in our instructions. Now something I'll do for where we've modified our access hole is just take a little bit of rust preventative spray paint and just cut, coat those bare metal edges to help resist any rust or corrosion that might form on that bare metal. Now our heat shield can go back in. Remember, we're only going to be using three of the fasteners this time. We eliminated one of them. Just want to make sure we got good clearance between the heat shield and our hitch there. That way we don't have any rattling. You should be able to tap it just kind of get that dead noise, no metal on metal contact noise. Now we'll hit each one of our exhaust hangers with a little more spray lubricant here and we can get that put back into position. All right, now we're ready to pull down our strap and that's all there is to it. Our hitch is ready for use. With our exhaust back in place, that's going to complete today's installation of the Kurt Custom Fit Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number C13206 on our 2015 Subaru Outback Wagon.